Everybody kept an eye on the Fed last week. We still don't know how many interest rate hikes we will see this year and how fast will it all be. There is one important question. Did US stock market just enter a bear market? This is the IG Trading Talk and I'm Manuel Koch. And joining me now are Salah Idide Boumidi, the head of markets at IG, and the legendary Einstein of Wall Street, Peter Tuckman, over 35 years on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Guys, so good to see you. Great to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Peter, the Fed is and was uh, the most important topic, and the markets are very nervous and very volatile. Do you think a bear market, or are we already in a bear market? You know what I look in a market, uh, you know, I always joke about it and I say this is not your grandfather's stock market. And I don't really like to put, you know, a, 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 a name on what, what's going on. We've had bear markets. We've had bull markets. We have kangaroo markets. Right now, I would say we have a jittery market. Let's really address what happened last week, guys, because I think it was historic. Right. Look, the, the, the worry about the taper, the worry about how many interest rate raises we're going to have in 2022 has been on the menu at this restaurant for a while now. And suddenly, why is it actually suddenly engaging the market? I often say that the market can handle, adapt to, and, 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 and um, uh, any bit of information. We saw the market, you know, be introduced to the inflation story. Well, there was a little bit of a sell-off, but not a lot of follow-through. We saw the supply chain issues. We saw a little bit of a sell-off, but not a lot of follow-through. We did see the Federal Reserve mention, I would think it was six weeks ago, or maybe even the meeting before that, about the fact that we're talking about the taper. We are talking about an accelerated taper. We're talking about interest rate raises in 2022, although we don't know if they're going to be four or five. And the market, in fact, rallied that Wednesday up 700 points to close at a record high. And we then had another four weeks of record highs. Let's be clear. This past week, for some reason, whether it is a little bit catalyzation by the Ukraine story, whether is it that it is a perfect storm where we've got the supply chain, we've got the inflation story, we've got the, the worries about the taper, we do have the interest rate raises coming up in 2022, and we are now in 22. The timeline is getting more real. The Federal Reserve did not tell us anything new on Wednesday, yet the narrative in the, uh, in the news conference that Mr. Jay Powell did say, look, at two o'clock on Wednesday, when they announced that the interest rates were staying the same, no surprise to anyone. I don't think there was anyone out there that thought they were going to do a shock and awe of raising them this past Wednesday. The market rallied 1,000 points. As the press conference continued, it reminded me of uh, 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 Bill Ackerman uh, during the COVID crisis. The narrative talked our way into a bearish market for the day as the reversal was 1,000 points after the press conference continued. I need to address that last week. This was historic. I can go over it. I have a photographic memory. On Monday at 1130, we were in a absolute bloodbath, down 1,200 points in the Dow and down 176 handles in the S&P 500. By 1215, we had started a rally, which ended the day on Monday, up 100 on the Dow and up 13 handles. That is a 1800 point reversal in the S&P 500 and a 1200 point reversal in the Dow. On Tuesday, we saw the same thing happen in early morning sell off and a massive rally reversal into the close. On Wednesday, the market came in in sort of positive territory, felt like we were sort of shaking off whether it was sort of a short cover in anticipation of the Federal Reserve. We saw the two o'clock announcement of no interest rate raises. We saw a thousand point rally and then a 1400 point reversal on the downside during the press conference. On Thursday, we once again came in with a rally. And then we saw once again a complete sell off. OK, and then again on Friday, we saw the jitters. We saw Apple earnings come out. Right. I think the only thing supporting the, uh, the market on Friday, even though we did open up, look, and overnight. We're seeing two 300 point moves back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. The question is clearly, is the market suddenly engaging the fact that interest rate raises and tapering uh, fast track to the taper is, in fact, a bullish indicator, a uh, bearish indicator in the market? Is it suddenly 
engaging. It's like noticing something on the menu at your favorite restaurant that's been there for four months. And you say, oh, my God, I've never seen this. It's been here for a while. Why is it suddenly getting your attention? Who is selling? Who is buying? Right. And there was a controversy last week when I sort of came out and I said, you know, what? my gut is that Monday was a bit of a margin call on young people's crypto accounts. Right. We do know that a lot of people are in crypto, millions and millions of traders are in there. And then and Coinbase and some of the other platforms did offer margin and loans to people who were in crypto when it was trading in the 60, 60, 000. Suddenly it's trading at 35,000. And suddenly that margin is no longer has any value. And people were forced to liquidate everything they could. I saw a lot of things online of people selling their investment accounts in Toto to be able to hold on to Bitcoin because they didn't want to liquidate that. I think that's insanity. But who's selling? Is it retail selling and smart money and uh, um, smart money institution buying it? Is it uh, uh, the large hedge funds rolling out of the some of the high flyers and getting into uh, and the retailers buying it? I'm not clear, but there is a shift in the market on a daily basis to see intraday reversals of more than 1,500 points in the Dow and the S&P is unheard of. You imagine the amount of money being lost and made, the amount of outflow and inflow of trillions of dollars in and out of the market. You know what? I, I'm presenting to you a scenario that is fascinating to me. I am forever humbled by this market and a student of the market, hoping to learn something from my partner, Salah, to try and understand what's really going on. Peter, very uh, interesting uh, points you just made. Uh, Salah, maybe that brings us to the chart of the week. And you are uh, looking, you have a look um, uh, on the markets. And uh, there is a saying, as January goes, uh, the year goes. So what can we see and expect here? It's the last day of the month. Yeah, taking up your general question from the beginning. So are we entering a beer market? Yes or no? We can't give you a clear answer directly but we have a nice chart of the week today which is the market effects that we are look that we are checking actually in January to get an indication what is happening in this year Santa Claus rally went well went actually better than average uh, which was good for Wall Street but the first five days have been actually shocking especially Nasdaq losing more than five almost five percent. And interestingly, this week, I already showed that in my German live stream daily. Please visit us, follow us, come and join us. It will be awesome because you will see what I have mentioned before. The December low of 2021 of last year has been broken in all three and even Russell 2000. They lost their December low. And this is actually something what we don't look, want to see in the first quarter of a year. Uh, and this is absolutely especially here for Nasdaq shocking almost 9% below of its December low of 2021. And we have this January performance. Today is the last trading day of the year, uh, of the month, sorry. We still in the beginning of the year, but uh, we will see that we will not get in a positive return in this month. And it's one of the worst months in S&P 500 since 1950, because 2006, uh, 2009, we had, of course, financial crisis, We had a January with a loss of minus 8.6 percent, and 1970, which was seven minus 7.6, something like this. And we are now year to date at around 8.7 percent minus in the S&P 500. All these signals are showing this year is not starting pretty much well. So we have warning signals here that might give confirmation for a trend continuation in this year. We are in a midterm election year. We know historically we have actually side war markets, maybe with a small bearish tendency. We have still Corona out there. We have this topic inflation. What will the Fed do is exactly what Peter already mentioned. So are we ending up with whatever six, seven rate hikes or just even only with one so exactly the media is, there are two sides, one which is really hawkish and the other really dovish, but at, actually we will not know how much rate hype we will see. I think 
up to two to four, this is something which could happen. But we will need to look on inflation. So this is a really, really important year this year. And I think we have seen it, and Peter already described that the volatility is huge. And I think we will have a higher volatility this year. This is something that we can definitely expect, I guess. You know, I think it's important to note, though, you are the historic master of all these things, is that curiously enough, what is happening in stocks, happening in markets, happening in, 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 in instruments is fast and it's furious. When you have 2,000 point reversals multiple right. times a day, multiple times in a week, you've got to wonder, and maybe we need to really calib recalibrate our terminology and recalibrate the historic analysis of the marketplace. Two weeks ago, we were trading at record highs, even though a lot of the tech sector was trading at 52-week lows. And the Russell, in fact, had been devastated by it, too. But net-net in the S&P 500 and in the Dow, I don't know if it's happened uh, uh, literally. I, I may, have, may have peaked out again in January. I know we did at a lot of different times during December, hit record highs. But when you go from record highs, you know, and you have these fast and furious sell-offs, suddenly that's amazing to suddenly use the terminology. A bearish market or a bullish market is usually something that's either generational, yearly, surely not monthly or quarterly, you know, that using that word as an analysis. But this is not your grandfather's stock market. The moves and the volatility, if we've learned something from 2022, is the volatility is here to stay. And last week was historic, ladies and gentlemen. We've seen 500-point rallies and 500-point sell-offs. We've seen crises where we've had, in fact, around COVID, we had 7 to 8% sell-offs intraday, and we had circuit breakers go off. But never have we ever had intraday reversals and sell-offs of thousands of points in the Dow and the S&P 500. Never. And that, is a, that, is a, that puts me in a quandary to try and understand, is it that there's one... One, you know, one team is, 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 is selling and the other team is buying. You know, are they waiting till the seller? Is it one generation selling, one generation buying? Is it retail traders who have no experience in this thing trading off of fear and they're selling and smart money buying with institutions trying to, you know, catch a bottom feed? Who is doing what? Fortunes are being made. Fortunes are being sold. Outflows are coming in like we've never seen before, and inflows are in one day. So it's very hard for us to, as you described, are we in a bear market? It's hard to know. This could all change in two days of, a, of, of next week. People sort of, you know, pushing, either sticking their heels in or pushing away the negative sentiment of their interest rate raises. And we could be, you know, by next Wednesday, we could be in a, uh, in, in a, in a bullish market. Uh, like, I mean... Absolutely, totally agree with you, Peter. And this is something what we need to know. Of course, beer market, but when they are losers, they are also winners. So we see already a rotation selling some specific stock sectors and buying some different, which is banking stocks, energy, look on oil, look on all stocks. So there will be a rotation in this year, either going more to defensive consumer and value stocks rather and selling this tech uh, equities, this might be a possible scenario. And this is why we both love to use as well technical analysis, because only this fundamental uh, scenario, we will never know the timing when this will happen. But we can combine it by, for example, with technical analysis, seeing that probably tech stocks are losing their moving average to 100, for example, where other bank titles, for example, are reaching their, uh, or getting back to over their 200 moving average. This could be some a signal that there is a momentum in change, a change in momentum, especially a rotation, actually. Well, let's be clear, too. The, 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 the sector that would uh, least uh, benefit from an interest rate raise is the tech sector. High growth stocks, the stocks that have taken us to the high highs, right, are now going to be yeah. the ones going to suffer from, from, from interest rate raises. Money will no longer be free, uh, as it's been for a number of years, and they are the ones who will, uh, will be affected the most, and they have been, right? Let's be clear. The stocks that took us up from 2020 till now is the tech sector. It led the way, 
right? They led the brigade. They were the charging force. And the ones that will least benefit and will suffer from raw five interest rate raises next year, which is proposed by J.P. Morgan and many others, will definitely have an effect on the high growth sector. One note, sorry, because I remember something that you already told us in the beginning of the pandemic. There is a re it's really difficult for companies to give guidance in the period of Corona. You have been absolutely right. And now the time will come that guidance will be possible. Investors will look on balance sheets, on fundamentals, and see who is the good and who is the bad. Look on the streaming providers like Netflix, how they have been disappointing the market the last week, actually, or the two weeks uh, ago, only because people will now see that there is a really difficult way to yeah, get much more growth in specific sectors. And this is an important step that you said. Guidance will be important this year. Guidance will absolutely be important. And we saw that with Delucti. It was one of the curious things that the three of us have discussed way back at the beginning of the pandemic, that first December in 2020, when JP Morgan, when Jamie Dimon said, guys, on the news conference at the earnings, was I cannot even predict guidance. I can't give you anything. I don't know. And though we are still in the midst of Omicron and we are attempting a recovery story and a reopening story, we still have a lot of bumps in the road that way. So while we're seeing, or look, uh, we talk about this a lot when we talk about technical analysis being the only defense against this kind of volatility, we are seeing companies beat earnings, beat guidance, and go down. We're seeing companies miss and go up. It's very hard to trade this market on fundamentals, which have historically been the lifeblood of a lot of long-term investing entry points, right? We are seeing things go, look, you know, we saw last week, on Friday, Apple come out with earnings. Historically, Apple always beats on earnings, yet initially the first response post-earnings in Apple is down. Well, Apple uh, uh, last week announced record earnings, record revenues, great guidance going forward, and for the first time went up, right? So you know what? As I always say, this is not just a grandfather stock market, right? Trading anticipatorily of information in the Fed. See, the, the, the question that is so powerful is, you know what, look, there's a lot of information being disseminated. There's a lot of moving parts in this world. Right now, we've got the inflation supply chain, the Fed, the taper, the interest rates, and whatnot. It's not a matter of the information, and it's a matter of how is the market going to react to this information. There are many different opinions in this marketplace. Big people with big money trading large portfolios, assets under management, plus 40 million new traders in the marketplace who have never seen this movie before. And you've got all of that swishing around, plus an internet that is very vibrant with opinions also, right? And so you've got, it's wild. It is wild. It feels like the Wild West. I have to admit, I am on the floor still. I traded last week. I was witnessing firsthand thousands of point reversals intraday. And I have to admit to you, it feels like the Wild West. John Wayne on a horse with a cowboy hat, riding the tundra, man. I'm telling you, I've never seen anything like it. Mm -hmm. Peter, you already mentioned Apple. We see a lot of earnings uh, of big corporates. Apple also said that it sees uh, that the supply chain is improving. What do you feel and hear from other companies? How is the situation for the big U.S. corporates at the moment? You know what? I'm not sure. I mean, I, I noticed that uh, there was a lot of uh, rising in uh, dividends, right? We're seeing that uh, uh, high dividend uh, companies are, uh, are benefiting from this marketplace as opposed to buybacks. We are seeing a, uh, I mean, I'm not clear if we are the overview on the, uh, the first few weeks of uh, earnings uh, um, dissemination. There's been some that were a little bit weaker than expected. Right. I think last earnings season, 87 percent of the S&P stocks were, had beat. Right. And I'm not sure how the stocks reacted. Look, guys, we've got a lot of things going on. A lot of the stocks that were the favorites over the last year are now under a lot of fire. Right. The UPSTs, the affirms, the meme stocks and whatnot. Let's be clear. I mean, guys, you know, you've got GameStop trading below $100. You've got AMC going right back down to $2. You know, you've got uh, Bitcoin. Uh, in the last number of weeks uh, get cut in half, you know? And I think I definitely, you've got a lot of people trading on margin 
in a lot of these names. You've got the Russell 2000 trading at 52 week lows. And though while two weeks ago we did see the market trading at record highs, last week we did say one of the most volatile times in history and thousand point sell offs on a number of days. Um, there are sectors that are going to ha have a fight to get back, even definitely uh, in the eyes of a, uh, the predictions of five interest rate raises next year. I mean, this year. I keep forgetting it is 2022 already. Um, yeah, Peter, we see, for example, on the commodity market, just as a small note, that Palladium is taking the lead in top performance from year to date. And we see also geopolitical geopolit tension, sorry, in Russia, which is one of the yeah, is the biggest producer of palladium. So, did, do you see any, yeah, connection between energy and commodity prices and political tension in history? So, is there any relation that you can tell us about something? Oh, and absolutely. People have been asking me all week long, uh, uh, at least last week about whether I think that uh, anything to do with the Ukraine-Russia problem uh, situation was at all a catalyst into the market's volatility and sell-off on those days. And I believe you'll be better to answer this than me. But historically, I'm not a, I'm not a big uh, believer that geopolitical does net-net have a single effect on market performance, right? There may be, you know, anxiety and fear on initial, uh, you know, uh, inception of perhaps conflict, and the market rarely will have a follow through unless unless we're in, you know, a major, major confrontation. Geopolitical confrontations don't affect the market. However, if you're looking at it sec sector centric, clearly, oh, look, Russia is one of the largest oil producers in the world, right? Obviously, there are pipelines going through uh, 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 that part of the world. Clearly, if we have uh, a conflict that is seems to be escalating towards somewhat of a war, it will definitely affect it. For surely it will affect the uh, Palladium as being the largest producer there. You've got sanctions coming out by the U.S. In fact, if this conflict gets to a head, you've got oil raising up above $87. So you know what? While it may not affect the market per se, it surely will affect the commodities market as we're seeing a, a massive rally in oil and energy sector. They have said over the last number of weeks that energy is the best performing sector, right? Nice. It was... It, it was not the flavor of the moment during 2021, but it's surely uh, the flavor of the moment coming into the first quarter of 2022. This is also my fear that inflation could still increase if we see, of course, that en energy is still picking up. You know what? Look, I look. Uh, we had that wonderful couple of weeks, you know, where there was that wonderful meme of uh, uh, Jay Powell, uh, you know, taking the word inflation, uh, taking the word inflation to the cemetery and talking about whether it's transitory or not. Mm -hmm. I kind of is here to stay for a while. I think that we've got, you know, we have issues uh, in the workforce and the labor force and people getting back to work. We've got issues with the, the price of labor, right? And that they're going to have to raise, wa raise wages. And I think net net at the end of the day, once we absorb it all, that will actually be a really good thing. I think we're seeing the price of commodities, goods and services have skyrocketed. Lumber going from $10 to $100 for a piece of plywood. The price of oil uh, uh, going to 87 a barrel. The price of gasoline here in the United States has definitely doubled over the last couple of years. You know, let's be clear. There's no playbook for a pandemic or coming out of a pandemic. Companies to protect themselves had to really grind to a complete halt when there was no demand while we were all sheltered in place for two years. Now the gears are going again. It's going to take a while for these companies to get online, become profitable again, get people back to work. So, you know what? Look. I think economies and markets and people are incredibly resilient. We will figure this out. It's not going to happen overnight. We're still in it, too. We're still in it, right? The demand I'm seeing restaurants that were able to stay alive with stimulus packages and PPP through the pandemic are now closing. They're now closing because the demand is not there. They've, they've ran through all stimulus and support that the government had given them, and they are, they are not a, a able to support themselves. It's very hard when a restaurant is running it. You know, people are still fearful to go out to a restaurant. You know, I kind of gauge it from my life. You know, we I go out to dinner with my wife every Wednesday night. It's sort of a present we gave ourselves through the pandemic. It's a wonderful little, a wonderful little restaurant called The Leopard here in New York City. And, you know, always packed, no matter what, through the pandemic. We were eating outside just to protect ourselves and whatnot. 
And then I would say probably six weeks ago, it ground to a complete halt. The restaurant was empty. It was absolutely incredible. And I'm sure it's the Omicron. I'm sure it's the, the vaccine and everybody's, you know, we're all fatigued by this. We've been in there for two years. I know I'm tired of it. We here on the floor are still wearing masks. We are, we are using social distancing. Our rules are stricter and stricter. Thank God the Omicron virus is not killing people the way other variants had, but we're still in it. We're still in it, right? 200,000 people a day, you said, are getting the virus. Here in the States, it's almost a million. I mean, that's crazy. We actually had two weeks ago where there was more than 1 million people testing positive a day. So thank God it's not a killer. We are still running into, into obstacles to reopening, to recovery, to inflation, to interest rate raises. You know, uh, uh, this is an ever-evolving story on a day-to-day -day basis. Guys, thank you so much for this discussion. So many important uh, topics we, we talked about. Okay. So I appreciate that a lot. Uh, Salah Edida Mumidi, the head of markets at IG and the legendary Einstein of Wall Street, Peter Tuckman. Guys, thank you so much. Always thank a pleasure. So nice. Happy trip. And thank you for watching the IG Trading Talk this week. More information on IG.com. All the best. Take care.